Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to how do Europe and the United States compare. I don't think it's a fair comparison to compare one country to a whole continent because America is not even the only country in North America. We also have Canada and so, but we will see how, how it goes. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content, comment on the next and subscribe for more content. Let's get into it. Europe. One continent, 44 countries, according to the UN, and 746 million people. The United States are part of North America, only one country with 329 million people, less than half of Europe. The United States are often compared to the European Union or Europe as a whole a lot of times. So in this video... So only United States is almost half of all Europe. One country, half of an, a continent. That's insane. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at a few indicators and check how it is that they in fact compare. We've already covered a few of the basics, amount of countries and population, but what about size? The United States have an area of around 9.8 million square kilometers, while Europe has a size of around 10.5 million. Million square kilometers, while Europe... So you're telling me... America is almost as big as the whole European continent. Come on, man. And Canada is even bigger than America. So you're telling me that Canada is probably bigger than Europe? This is insane, man. I, I didn't even know this. It's crazy. While Europe has a size of around 10.5 million. Although this can vary depending on which limits you attribute to the continent. So now that we've covered all of those basics, let's jump into a few specific- Wait, isn't Russia even bigger than Canada? So that makes Russia one country bigger than the whole European continent. It's crazy because I don't think Russia is not part of Europe. Caters and find out how the two compare. First, comparing the latitude. It's very interesting to see the overlay of the European cities on top of the US territory and vice versa. For instance, as stupid as it may sound, I had no idea Reykjavik was as further north as northern Canada. The same applies to Oslo. It makes sense that Portuguese and Spanish cities are on the same level as California, at least climate-wise, but it's weird. For instance, that Ankara is at the same level as Delaware. For some reason, I always thought it was so much further south. It's also strange to see that Los Angeles is on the same latitude as Algeria in North Africa, or that oh. New York is at the same latitude as Azerbaijan. Speaking of Portugal, Spain, and California, how do the US and Europe compare when it comes to the hours of sunlight they get every year? Through this map, we understand that the Southwest USA gets more hours of sun than anywhere in Europe, over 3,500 a year. And unlike Europe, there's nowhere in the US that gets less than 1,800 hours of sun, as is the case in many areas of Europe, those in light green, blue, and dark blue. It's also odd, at least to me who isn't an expert on this matter, how the amount of hours of sun isn't directly related to the latitude of the region. I always assume that the closer to the equator you are, the more hours of sun you get, but we can see on this map that this isn't the case at all, even though we can tell that usually southern areas get more sun. If you know which other factors determine hours of sun, let me know in the comments. Another interesting topic is human development. The United States and Europe are arguably two of the most developed areas of the world. This map mm -hmm. compares the human development index of each US state and each European country. In case you don't know, the HDI is calculated as the geometric mean of life expectancy, education, and gross national income per capita. Assuming that those indicators are representative of the quality of life of people, it seeks to measure precisely that. In the United States, there's only one state that doesn't make it into the top three HDI categories. Mississippi. Mississippi. When we look at Europe, only a handful of countries Mississippi is next to Memphis. I live in Memphis. Crazy. I didn't even know that. Damn, Mississippi. These are in the top ranking. Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Ireland, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, and Switzerland. And when you look at... Wait, no England, no France, no Belgium? Okay. Eastern Europe, these levels go significantly down, with many countries in the lowest category, such as Ukraine, Turkey, Serbia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Albania and North Macedonia. In Western Europe, Portugal is the only country who isn't in the top three levels of HDI. A somewhat subjective comparison of these two areas is also depicted in this other map. This is based in the 2014 
Pew Research Center poll. It's almost 10 years old, so the data might be somewhat outdated and no longer valid. Always keep that in mind for these types of videos where data and maps are presented. The data might not be 100% right and it might be outdated. But in this one, people were asked if they are absolutely certain of God's existence. And the comparison of the Damn, Europe is almost completely atheist. Oh my god. Damn, Europe. The results between the US and Europe is astonishing. The majority of US states have over 50% of people being certain of God's existence, good. some even surpassing 70%, those in dark blue. Only Vermont, Maine, and Massachusetts have results under 50%, while most of Europe is much less certain in their belief of God. Damn, most of the Europe. continent is in yellow, with only 10 to 29% being certain of their belief. Portugal, Poland, Slovakia, Lithuania, and Ukraine, along with Bulgaria, go up to 30 or 49%, but still not reaching over half of the population. The rest of the Balkans is more religious, but it's only Georgia and Armenia who reach the dark blue level. There's a few countries missing from this map, those in gray. If you have any idea of how religious they are, leave a comment below. Another interesting thing we can compare are age restrictions in the US and Europe. Age restrictions can be applied to driving, voting, tobacco, or alcohol purchases. Many of these change often, so be aware these might not be correct at the moment you watch. When it comes to driving, the US government allows people to drive at a much younger age. In South Dakota, it says you can drive at 14 years and 6 months. That's kind of crazy if it's true. And the oldest driving age in the US seems to be New Jersey at 17. While in Europe, the vast, vast majority of Honestly, I think 16 is is better. 14, man? 14 years old? That's crazy. If countries has a 18 years minimum driving age, only the UK, Iceland, Hungary, and Georgia have lowered it to 17. When Dunk, basically in Europe, if you're not 18, you can drive. That's it. It's also kind of... I mean, the, the thing is, in Europe, you have a lot of public transportation. You have the metros, you have the trains, you have a lot of public transportation, which is not widely available in a lot of states in America. Example, in, in Memphis here, we don't have that. We only have the buses. And if you ride buses, man, the whole, it can take you the whole day to go from point A to point B. Maybe not the whole day, but hours to get from one point to, to another point, which is crazy. When it comes to voting, 18 is common all around. Only in Europe are there two countries that differ. Austria at 16 and Greece at 17. Although I'm not sure if these limits are the same for all types of elections. Tobacco purchase is technically only allowed over 21 in all of the US, while in Europe you can buy it at 18. Alcohol purchasing is also forbidden for people under 21 all across the United States, with the limit ages. Europe allows 16 years old to buy alcohol? No, that's insane. Bearing a lot. I mean, the other thing also is they don't drive, so. But still, man, 16? There are a lot of things that you can do under the influence of alcohol. And if you are 16, across Europe, but none being higher than 18 or 20. Although again, this also varies depending on the type of alcohol. For instance, in Portugal, I think you can buy beer or wine as long as you're over 18, but other drinks do have a 20 year age limit, I think. When it comes to comparison between military, for instance, it's a difficult comparison to make. According to Wikipedia, the US Army has a personnel of around 1 million, counting active troops, reserves, and National Guard. And according to this 2018 article from Business Insider, the top five strongest militaries in Europe, all of these maps exclude Russia, are France with 390,000, the UK 280, Italy 267. <laughs> so you're telling me that if America was to fight France, UK, Italy, Germany, and Spain, they will be on equal grounds, on equal ground to fight. It's contained. One country. Germany 200 and Spain 175. Together, these alone would surpass the US Army, although you'd still need to take into account the material advantage of the US. Ships, intelligence, tanks, planes, investment, and in these the US yeah. has a considerable advantage, as we can see from this graph depicting the investment comparisons. But thankfully, most of Europe and the US are allied through NATO, so a comparison isn't needed because in the event of a conflict, it is very likely they would be on the same side. And what about an economic comparison. The United okay. States and the European Union are the two 
largest economies globally in nominal terms. In recent years, only in 2011 did the European Union have a higher GDP than the US. Keep in mind, this excludes non-EU Europe. The US's GDP per capita is 63,000, while in the EU, it's 33. But okay. keep in mind, both of these are on average. There are EU countries and US states with higher and lower values. Also, as we can see from these maps, the US's GDP is mostly carried by California, Texas, Ooh. Florida, and New York, while Europe's is mostly carried by France, Germany, the UK, Spain, and Italy. When it comes to currency comparison, as I make this video, one euro equals $1.07. Okay. The euro's value has been higher and recently its value has decreased a little, approaching parity with the dollar. As we can see from this graph, there was only a short period in the early 2000s when the euro was worth less than the dollar and there was a point where it was almost worth 50 percent more recently things have stabilized and they're almost worth the same but with croatia joining the european currency next year it might go up again also keep in mind not all of europe and not even all of the eu use the euro as their currency another interesting point to compare is the percentage of young people aged 18 to 34 that still live in their family's home meaning in most cases they do not yet have the financial stability to live on their own both of these maps have data from 2015 but from the most recent information i could find about this the numbers haven't changed a lot in europe nordic countries have very low values they're also the highest income areas so it makes sense people can more easily afford to live on their own but it might also have to do with the cultural element in southern europe yeah. the amount of young people still living at home is tremendous 44 percent in portugal 37 in spain and 46 in italy for instance while greece bulgaria and Slovakia are all above 50%. In the US, values are equally as high, with the difference being that there are no states at all below 10%. The lowest value is 14 in North Dakota, and the highest being in New Jersey with 46, although none surpass 50%. These high values are usually connected with the fact that salaries do not pay enough, and the cost of living is way too high, both due to rising prices, inflation, and also other factors. So that Wait, is how the United States and Europe compare in a number of indicators and interesting aspects. There's a lot of things you could compare the two in. If you know of any more, leave a comment and I can always make a part two of this. It's always difficult to be fair in these comparisons. After all, the United States are a single country and Europe has around 44. But if you take into account that the US are a federal state consisting of 50 states, the comparison makes a little more sense, yeah. especially when the size of the two is similar. As we can see on this interactive map, the size of the US over Europe Europe is pretty close and as you saw in the beginning the number of square kilometers are pretty close as well in many ways they are similar but in so many other big differences are visible many of which signifying a great difference in the way that people live their life and the quality that life has thanks so much for watching this video subscribe if you want to catch future videos and leave a comment below with your opinions i will see you next time for more general knowledge okay that was a great video actually that was a great video but yeah i enjoyed that he he had some very interesting facts but the one that surprised me the most is that europe allows 16 years old to buy alcohol that was insane to me and that america allows 14 years old to drive cars and go into the circulation and everything but yeah that was i'm not here it's already long long enough but yeah please don't forget to leave a like if you have the content comment to your next on what you see next and subscribe for more content and i hope that you learned some new content some new things with me and until next time, peace out.